here we are today. Um, it's Andrew and I. Andrew is uh, an account manager, customer support specialist, and knows our tech inside out. I'm a director here at Planetar. Both of us are, are Planetar employees. And we are doing this webinar today um, utilizing iGUIDE to deliver evaluation drawings. Evaluation drawings are somewhat new to us. I'd say we're in our third month of doing it. And with that comes a, a lot of change, um, both at the front end and the back end of the product. And that's what this is all about. So I, I know we have a very complicated uh, offering and I'll, I'll go through a couple of those things, but the, the focus of today is on these types of elevation plans. And if you want them, you know, you've got to shoot a little bit differently. You've got to organize your work a little efficiently in stitch. You've got to order correctly and then how those deliverables will be provided to you. So just kind of as an overview, we'll, we'll go through overview and pricing capture requirements by Andrew, stitch organization, a sample. That's really important and it may be overlooked at times that we, we do need stitch to be organized a nice way, not a templated way, but just so we're not hunting for hundreds of dimensions that we know, you know, your elevations are over here on this layer or floor and your internal ones are on this, et cetera, et cetera. So just organization, uh, how to order or how to process. So it's, as we've been transitioning from iGUIDE to iGUIDE to DWG, now DWG to Revit and Revit onto the 3D CAD packages. Um, the ordering screen you know, can be confusing. There's a lot of options on there. So we'll, Andrew will go through just some of those options on the iGUIDE screen. Um, deliverables. So this is a pretty easy one, but how do we actually deliver this to you? You don't see, and I guess maybe an asterisk here because we, we do so much. And it is a little confusing at times, but we don't deliver the, the elevation drawings in the eye guide. They are an outputted format from all the data. The uh, eye guide will still just show the panos and the drafted floor plans for you to navigate through. We're now pivoting and using the sensor to use it a different way, collect different data, collect different offsets. So that if you capture it and you do ask for a 3D, we can deliver the elevation drawings. But those elevation drawings are, or roof plans and a whole bunch of other things are not actually shown in the portal. And then tips and tricks that we'll go through as they come up in terms of avoiding rejections. The last thing we want is for you to upload a property, say I want a 3D CAD package, I need elevation drawings, and then it gets rejected because you didn't do a couple of things or we didn't know how it was supposed to be organized, et cetera, et cetera. That's the last thing anybody wants. So hopefully this will we'll cover off some key things in here um, that will allow you to uh, avoid those types of things. I've got one other slide and then I'm gonna actually start to turn it over to Andrew. Um, and this is, I know it's a complicated slide, but I, I just kind of wanted to highlight why we're here and, and what we're talking about today. So if you kind of look from left to right, this is kind of an overview of our, of our product offering where you go Radex, iGUIDE, DWG, Revit, 2D package, 3D CAD package. You have to order the 3D CAD package in order to get these sort of elevation drawings. They are today, we can only talk about what the product offerings are today. If you want this type of an elevation plan, we are going through the whole 3D development product uh, project of inside the house, outside the house, or inside the property, outside the property. We are making a watertight model through all of the scan data that we provide. So you cannot just buy a DWG and elevation plans. You have to buy the 3D package. And the reason you have to do that is because we're making a watertight model with all of that content in the model we then provide the drawings as a separate section. So yes, there's a lot of hoopla and a lot of options along the journey. Today's focus is all about the exterior elevations. And you know that extra drafting, that extra modeling, that water type modeling, as we call it, comes at a cost. So for a 3000 square foot house, you know, you're looking at 630 bucks. It's it's a lot of man hours to, to deliver that to you, which is why it is the price that it is. So 
just be aware of that. Um, I think there's room for improvement the way we communicate some of that pricing and modeling at the front end. I'm just sharing with you how things are today. And um, hopefully they, they may change um, in, this, in the future. I know there's a roadmap to improve the communication and options along that along this route. But today we're going to be focusing on the right-hand end where you have to order a package and we'll explain a couple of the technical details as to why. So with that, Andrew, we're going to go all the way back to the previous slide and we're going to start with capture requirements. And if you want to take it away, I'll stop sharing and, um, and I'll start sharing. You can share your screen and that sounds good, Rob. Thank you. Me, teach me how to do that. And there's a question already in the Q&A, which is a quick and easy answer for you if you want. <laughs> I was like, um, yes, Ed, it is certainly being recorded. And I, everyone, everyone who, who registered will get a copy of it. And now, Rob, I know you said you turned it on, but if you don't mind just double checking that the share feature is enabled for me. Okay, try now. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Rob, can you confirm you can see my screen? Yes, sir. Excellent. All right, so I've gone ahead and shared my uh, survey connection. So I've connected to my PlanX through my laptop here <clears throat> so that everyone should be able to see. Uh, you're probably used to uh, creating your project and labeling at the address and then scanning it in a typical fashion where the PlanX is uh, upright and you're scanning uh, as you normally would. However, we need things organized in a slightly different way, <clears throat> or rather quite a significant, <laughs> significantly different way so that um, the data doesn't get you know, overly complex for you to see it on site, but also so that our drafters can quickly uh, assess the data and then give you the outcome that you're requesting. So I'm going to click on my project here uh, and for those of you who are not aware, you can have multiple projects on your disk at any given time. So I'm going to click on Masterclass Elevations and Vertical Scans. And you can see how I've organized my data here. So take a moment and uh, you can look at what we've captured here. But one thing to, to note is that you're going to scan the main floor like you normally would and every floor on that property like you normally would. Uh, I'm going to pull up actually a quick little video here, if that will work. If it will play, we'll find out. And if not, that's quite all right. In fact, let's make sure that we've done our basement here. So you can see here we've got our basement. So this scan looks pretty typical to you. However, once we get to this panel over here, and let's just go full LiDAR mode. Once we get to this LiDAR scan here, this is where we've reached our staircase. So then once, once we've scanned the entirety of the floor, we're now going to create the elevations for it. So in this case, I'm going to go to the menu. I'm going to click on floor. And then I'm going to create a staircase for that correlating floor. So in this case, it's going to be basement stairs. Once I've gone to that point, <clears throat> I'm, going to have, I'm going to take my first scan at the bottom of the stairs. Then I'm going to take at least one at the top. And if it's appropriate or necessary, you can certainly take additional scans along the staircase. So one at the bottom and one at the top. And that's going to be maintained within the floor called basement stairs in this example. Uh, and the reason for that is we need to be able to capture the ceiling height here and the floor here so that we can get the, um, the ceiling uh, thickness. And Rob, I'm going to leave it to you to keep uh, on an eye on the Q&A, although I believe uh, how you have them aligned. Great question, Paul. So these will actually align for you. Um, there's no real uh, trick to doing the alignment, but I'm going to show you a visual that should help conceptualize how you would want to have this placed. So we'll just pull this up in here. So you would ha have your Planix on its side like this, and you can see that the LiDAR is going to be scanning each of these stairs here. And then as you move up the staircase, whether or not you take a scan midway through or just go directly to the top, the data will come out like this. In this example, I took one at the bottom here and then one at the top and it aligned perfectly. I added these two later on just for additional scan points. But when you position the camera, you wanna make sure that when you have it uh, on the right side here, for example, you maintain that as you go up the staircase. You don't wanna be flipping this to the other side. So 
If it's pointing on the right side, maintain that position all the way up so that the LiDAR data is consistent. I have a question. Sure thing, Rob. Does it matter what order I do it in? Are you talking top to bottom, bottom to top, middle? I just mean, I mean, yeah, top to bottom or my staircase shoot in general. Does it matter if I go into the house and do my floor plans first or do I do my stairs first? Does that matter at all? It does not matter at all because you are creating a separate floor. So it's its own independent space. Now you can tell me otherwise, but uh, from my experience, um, because you've got it on its own floor, you are creating a standalone uh, LiDAR uh, data capture point. And so it's not going to conflict with anything else that you have or have not scanned. Okay. So my, my question is, I, I get now how to organize my stairs. I mm -hmm. put my camera vertically. Mm -hmm. Why am I scanning stairs? Very good question. So let's go back to our staircase here. So uh, as I briefly mentioned there, uh, we need to be able to see the LiDAR data for the floor uh, above and the ceiling for that floor. And that is going to allow us to calculate the ceiling thickness. So, so Jason has a question while we're, while we're talking about this and we'll answer it now. Does the camera have to be on its side? So when you're doing this 3D CAD package and, and it's kind of, um, it's kind of a default regarding the 3D CAD package that we want the model to be as accurate as possible so we can provide the drawings as accurate as possible. And in order to do that, we want an accurate floor to ceiling measurement. And that's what Andrew's doing now. And by putting the camera on its side and getting the floor of the basement to the floor of the other one, um, you're getting now an accurate floor to ceiling measurement. So we can, again, it's just another raised level of accuracy in order to make that Revit model as accurate as possible. So yes, to answer the question, if you want, if you want to just order a Revit package, no, you don't need to put it on its side. We'll do the vertical measurements and the interpolation from just the photospheres. But if you want the 3D CAD package with elevations, you have to put it on its side. And then in regards to the angle of the angle, yeah, you should be making sure that it's level here as well. Mm -hmm. So very good questions, very, very important questions. And what is the difference between stitching and aligning? Um, it really means the same thing. It's just making sure your scans are aligned. It, it's um, when we say aligning, it just means that um, if your auto snapping during capturing aren't aligned, they, they have to be aligned. They have to be able to see geometry to align with each other and snap together. We're, we just typically use the word stitching because we take the output from the camera and go into stitch where we are doing these aligning functions and they get kind of, they sometimes get the acronym, we're stitching it together, we're aligning it together. It's the same kind of, um, it's just different names meaning the same thing. Yeah. Do you need to do two scans at the top of the stairs, one on the right and one, no. You just need to do one at the top in the middle, let's say, and one at the bottom in the middle. It doesn't, you don't need to do two. We've we've got a couple extra shots on this on the screen that Andrew is showing right now. Yeah. Um, I I personally choose to do an extra couple shots in the middle. That really just depends on the geometry of the stairway and the length of the stairs, because you need to be able to align or stitch that data together as you transition up or transition down. And if you've got a very long set of stairs and you can't see alignable geometry, then you have to do midway points as well. So you don't have to do necessarily two at the top and two at the bottom, or you just have to make sure you've got data, just like Andrew's showing on a screen, that can accurately capture the ceiling in on the bottom section and the floor on the bottom and on the on the upper one and be able to align those together so we can go in and measure the distance between the lidar and that gives us an accurate um, floor to ceiling measurement. 
and, and just to ignore this uh, extra one here on the bottom of my screen. So Anush, that's a great question. I think it's a little bit outside of the scope today, but by all means, um, Andrew does master classes every Tuesday and Thursday, or you can email me and I'll show you how to do it. There are two or three different options in Stitch for moving data around to mm -hmm. uh, align them properly. Yeah, and I'm hosting a webinar today at 5 p.m. Eastern if you want to join and we can cover that. Great, these are good questions. Oh, there's some more coming in. That's a really good question there, Rob. <clears throat> nope, I'm just do it on one set of stairs. So you would just, you'll have one set of, even if there's a landing, you'll just do it on one. So if you're transitioning from main floor to upstairs, you'll put those vertical scans on one floor and then have the stairs that go from the basement to the main floor on another floor. Let me see if I can, yeah. So in this example, there would be a bit of a landing up there. So you'd place the camera slightly over on, on top of the stairs there as a new floor. And then from that scan to the next, you'd be, you know, staircase to main. Is that, correct. yeah. Correct. 100% correct. Okay. Is that visual we, help, uh, Kyle? All right. So we, we got another two questions on related top, on somewhat related topics. So I'll go to the, Bruce Bruce asked a question. I have done a couple of these projects, but the size of the file was too large to send as normal. So the only time that that, it's not necessarily the size of the file, it will be the number of panos. Um, so it, it, it's, it is normal right now. It's somewhat gated. And if you ever have that come up again, you just need to send us an email because we have a, a backdoor around that. It's designed to do that at 250 panels right now so that people aren't uploading 30, 40,000 square foot properties as a 3D CAD package without us reviewing the geometry to make sure we can even do it. So it, it's gated there for a reason. So if you get that, if it's just a residential property and you still hit the 250 panel count and it tells you that, at the on the on the capture screen how many how many scans you've got just reach out and we'll help you and we can back we can provide it in an administrative bypass on that bruce so it's just a gate that's been put there to prevent people from uploading very large commercial properties um without it being gated um and reviewed and then Max had a, I hope, hopefully that answered your question, Bruce. Max had a question. So if I upload a project and it is missing stitch data, that means there were alignment issues, um, probably, um, or missing stitch data is you've asked us to draft the whole floor plan and there is a room missing or you didn't, you just didn't scan a room or there was, so it's either a really bad misalignment, which we can normally figure out, or there's, data missing on that floor and we don't know what to do with it. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Good questions Let's coming keep in. Keep going, Andrew. Yeah. Great questions. Good, good indeed. All right, so <clears throat> um, just picking up where we left off, we're covering the stairs there. So then we're gonna just show you the floors one more time. So. <clears throat> just to recap, you're going to create several floors uh, in your project creation. So you're going to take your main floor, maybe you know, you're going to create a second floor or upstairs, whatever you like to call it, and perhaps a basement. You're going to scan those like you normally would. And then, of course, you're going to create your vertical scanning floors. You're going to separate all of your vertical scans on their own independent floor. Uh, that allows the data to be easily viewed, easily processed, and then gets you your final product very quickly. Um, and it will save you a lot of time when you're on site as well, because when you organize like this consistently, um, it's it's going to come second nature to you, and then you're going to be in and out of that property faster than you know it. So, with that being said, <clears throat> let's uh, take a look at Stitch, and what that will look like once we were to load this type of project into Stitch.
There we go. Okay. So if we've loaded up our project into Stitch, this is what we would have. We would have multiple floors. Now, that being said, you can upload from your phone. You don't need to upload it from Stitch, but we're just going to cover this uh, at the moment. So we've got our main floor here. Lots of scans, more than you would typically need uh, on the interior portion anyways. But you would have scans of the entirety of the internal portion of the property, so the indoor portion. You're also going to have scans outside of the home. So you're going to want to have scans around the front door, all around the exterior portions of the property. Hello, Rob. Okay, so you're going to go all around the property, make sure that you've got captured the entire space there. Wait a second, Andrew. You mean I can take my camera outside? You sure can. Yeah, actually, one of the cool tricks is uh, you can either start inside or outside. It's entirely up to you. I like to start after I've captured the entirety of the inside of the home. And then you can take a scan right at the threshold of the door with the door open. And it creates overlapping geometry or overlap, overlapping LiDAR data. And you can move outside. And you want to be about six feet from the property. Uh, you can keep going a little bit further back once you've established a really good set of geometry or LiDAR data. But you can move around. Again, you can see here, I'm hitting the corner. You can see on the visual portion of the screen, this LiDAR data is correlates with the, the, the outside of the home. And you just keep going around the property. You can see that you can get capture all the documentation on the exterior. There was a drone shot in there, which we can cover at another time. But yeah, you can, you can capture everything outside. Some really unique spaces and also, uh, it's okay. relevant. Yep, go ahead. So um, there's two questions that have come in or two comments in the in no the chat area and they're related to each other and th there's a big some bigger picture issues going on here. Okay. The biggest challenge of shooting the exterior besides when it's raining mm -hmm. um, is keeping the data aligned and especially when there is big topology changes. So if you've got hills on your property, if you've got decks with varying heights, if you've got a significantly sloped driveway and what have you, it's a challenge, don't get me wrong. And you really have to be clever with your tripod and raising it up and down in order to capture the geometry to keep things aligned as best as you can. But, um, and I'll answer the questions about verticals once he's done the verticals, Paul. But just remember, you're shooting outdoors for three main reasons. The first one is to give you an accurate wall thickness. So you, you need to be clever around the base of, of the property. The second thing is to give us visuals of what type of siding and brick and windows and doors and all that is on the property. So your topology or elevation changes are become important, but but not as critical as your indoor stuff. So you just have to be clever. This was an, a, a really difficult property because of the elevation change from the front yard to the backyard and the steps going down, the, the uh, elevation in the back property. There's, it's just not, it's not easy. You just have to take your time and do it and, and get it aligned as best as you can. But just knowing well that it's for the wall thickness calculation and so that the drafting team can look at the properties of the external and, um, you know, use things like the eaves trough to align to you and your gables to align to you and what have you that way. Just do the best you can with what you have and we will try and use it as best as we can. Um, so. That being said, there is a third variable, which is the vertical piece, but I'll, I'll address that, Paul, after Andrew's gone through the vertical section. And now Ed has one question. Can you set the elevation for each point rather than doing it for each floor? Um, I'm not sure what you mean there, Ed. So you yeah. may want to provide some more details, but Andrew, yep. please proceed. Let's get through the vertical stuff yep. outside and then we can come back and loop back on that. That sounds good. And this may actually answer Paul's question with regards to the verticals. Uh, and this is why organizing the data is crucial. So creating a separate floor for front elevation, for example, we're going to see here that at the front door or the front entrance of the home, we've got our camera on the side. You can see the shadow here. <clears throat> 
So we're going to be taking our vertical scans. So we do that. You can see that we're capturing the LiDAR data here. And then we're going to move further back. You can see the LiDAR data again, capturing more data here. Moving further back. And we're going to try our best to follow a straight pathway back. And you can see the LiDAR data here in Stitch. And we're going to continue back. And that's going to provide you the front elevation here. Now we're going to go to the back elevation. Same concept. Start at the closest point of the home here. And then we're going to work our way away from the property. Again, following as much of a straight line as possible. The visuals I know can be a bit disorienting, but uh, mostly the LiDAR data is, is what's crucial here. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing for the left side of the home. So you're going to create a separate floor and that's, that's pretty crucial so that you don't have to run into uh, any alignment issues. And you're going to see here that the LiDAR data is hitting the eavesdrops here. And you move further back. And the same thing for the right side. So organization of your data is probably the most important next to, of course, um, you know, adjusting for any sort of a, a fluctuation uh, when you're capturing it on the, the normal sense and making sure that the tripod is, uh, of course, level as, as possible. Each scan. I'm just checking all those questions there. Uh, if possible, if you post your questions in the Q&A, it just helps Rob and I uh, keep them organized so that they don't fall off the radar here. Rob, I'm sure you're quickly scanning through them too. Yes, Paul, to answer your question, there are times where I often elevate, especially if I have a tiered roof, mm -hmm. that I do elevate it up in the air, even in the vertical orientation. Because what the big takeaway with this elevation scanning is that the visuals are very nice and the drafters do need the visuals to know where the window is and know where the door is and where the chimney is and be able to measure this and that off of the photos. The most important thing is the alignment of the LIDAR data because we're able to pull the measurements we need off of the LIDAR data. So the, you're kind of swapping that the LIDAR data is becoming more important during these operations than the visuals. And it's just allowing us to feed the drafting team the cross sections they need in order to draft the property. Hmm. Very good. Uh, Clinton, to your question, uh, is there any way to see the, the green line here that you see in Stitch in survey? Unfortunately not. So, Keep in mind, you were showing it a bit earlier. There is a pretty big update to survey coming with SLAM. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you wanted to show that, but um, that is going to project the LIDAR. So, you know, it will show you um, a little bit more at the time of capture. So, you know that everything's aligned. I think that will do a lot of the things you wanted to do with the green line. Oh, I can show that a very quick version of that. <clears throat> wasn't. Yeah, there we go. So you can see here, yeah, as you're scanning, uh, it's going to align. It's going to help you with your data alignment, uh, showing you in real time. I'm still using the beta version though. So yeah, but we're not we're not worrying about alignment, guys. You have to remember. I'm sorry, we're not using these vertical scan data to draft off of, we're making sure that the LIDAR cross sections are aligned. So as you get into bigger areas, the geometry is realigned with each other, not aligned or squared up horizontally or vertically, even to the property. We don't care about that. Just what we geometry. care about is that the geometries in the LIDAR for the drafter to be able to dimension off of and pull dimensions off of doesn't need to be um, aligned in a particular orientation. They just have to be aligned with each other. So um, there's lots of different ways that people are doing this today. 
There's lots of different secondary methods. What we're trying to get the, the message across that as you're capturing these and in the house that Andrew was, was doing, sometimes there isn't enough spot to go back 10 feet on the right-hand side of a property because the neighbor's house or driveway is right there. You just have to collect the best data that you can. And that's why we've got the exterior shots in the normal orientation fused with the vertical LIDAR data for us to pull dimensions off of. And between those two things, we're able to model the exterior. Perfect answer. <laughs> All right. So I don't know, we, we, you know, we, we were talking over this as Andrew was doing this, but what's coming out, and this is a product that's in, in about to be released is a new update to survey that actually shows forward looking LIDAR. So before you take your shot, you're actually able to see how much new geometry is going to be collected as it's aligned to your existing scan. So it's it's kind of neat that before you press the measure button, there's a new uh, visual aid to help you keep things aligned, squared, and are you capturing enough data? All right, Andrew, let's move on. Yep. <clears throat> oh, Paul's got a... Oh, no, that's... Uh... I was reading the old comments there. All right, so we've covered our survey, uh, organizing your survey data, which I think is pretty established now. Uh, we've reviewed Stitch and the why, and now the upload <clears throat> process. Pardon me, just need to cough one moment. Sorry about that. Okay, so. If you're on your phone and you've captured everything in full and you feel like you're ready to submit your project, you can do one of two things. So you can go to the menu in survey and you can go to project and then you can select the project that you'd like to upload and you can click on this button here. After it stitches all of the panels, we'll be following the next uh, steps, which is to upload it to the portal. Uh, this is run directly from my computer, so it's not going to look the same if you were to do it on your phone. Uh, but I did make a video of that in advance, so let me just quickly pull that up. So here you go. So you'll see it's going to stitch all of the panels together. Hopefully I've sped this up so we don't have to wait the entire time. Okay, once that's done, you're gonna tap on close and you're, you're going to tap on close survey on the top. And that's gonna bring you to this section here. So you're gonna see your camera listed, perhaps you've got several. Uh, let's see if I can shrink that down so I can see it. So you see where it says projects here, you're gonna click on that. And you're gonna see that you've got your project here. You could have several other projects, but this is where you're gonna see your most recent. You're gonna click on this share button. <clears throat> and then from there, you're going to be notified that you can open up the portal and you'll be presented with the option to upload new data or update an existing. You're gonna be clicking on new if this is a new project, of course. Oh, I've left this idle for too long. My plan X went into power safe mode. Okay. And you're going to be following these steps for creating your eye guide. So let's bring that over here. So next up, we're going to be selecting our industry. In this case, we're going to select architecture and remodel. We're going to choose our package. Pardon me, just need to cough one more. Pardon me, just fighting off a cold. So you're going to select your package. And in this case, we're going to be selecting the 3D CAD package, as Rob discussed earlier. You're going to select your uh, measurement system that you're going to be using, so metric or imperial. And we're going to click on request 3D CAD. And then these are paid add-ons. So if reflected, reflected ceiling plans are something that you're looking at as well, 
you can click on this info tab here. Rob can certainly speak more to that if necessary. Uh, and then you would, of course, move down to the next stage, which is to enter in a property address. So in this case, we can put Parkside Drive. Now, this is covered in another video, but if you don't want to have an address associated with your iGUIDE, you would just click on Disable Property Address and then just enter in your own internal version of how you'd like to refer to this property that you're working on. Okay, and then you would hit select. If you do it this way, the property will not be indexed on Google. Uh, and it's a little bit, there's a couple of steps in order to share it. If you do want to do that, just note that um, your iGUIDE will be in a more protective state if you disable the property address. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead with this one. And we're going to hit select. And then this is where you're going to drag and drop that Stitch tar data. So if you've loaded your project onto your computer and you've worked it through Stitch, so you've done all the processing here and you've hit save and then you've hit export. It'll stitch up all the panels. I'm not gonna do that now because that would certainly bog down the computer, uh, but you'll actually have a new project folder or rather a new folder uh, contained within the original project folder and it will be called underscore export. So let me just go ahead and find that for you. And so you'll have this new folder here and that's gonna contain the stitch file. So if we were to shrink that down, you would just simply drag and drop. That's it. And then once you're ready, you would click on Create iGUIDE. This is a, a test space here, so don't have to worry about all that. Let's just go back and make sure that everything is good. Rob, if I missed something here, perhaps I selected additional settings. And Rob, I'm not sure if your mic is still functioning, so I'm just going to quickly check those messages as they come in. Yeah, I'm still going. I'm oh, okay. Still, I'm responding to them. Okay, you're good then. Okay. Uh, oh, we've exceeded the, um, the limitation in my example. That's why. So this was brought up by someone else as well, actually. So we would have you'd have to reach out to us if you've got a large file like I have. But in any case, um, you would click on Create iGUIDE, upload it, and it would be submitted to us. And that would be the entirety of the process for submitting your data. Uh, one thing I do like to remind everyone, though, is if you're going to be uploading from your computer, or rather if you're working on your project in Stitch, make sure you're fully copying the project from your USB onto your computer, and then safely eject the USB and put it back into your Planix. Two reasons for that. Uh, the first reason is you don't want to forget your USB in your computer and take off with your Planix with no way to save. Uh, the second reason is you want to avoid losing your data. So if you're doing a lot of reading and writing to your USB, it's a lot of work for the USB and you don't want to uh, you know, have any data loss. So always copy the file from the USB onto your local drive and then safely eject it before working on your project in Stitch. So Kyle, I'm, I'm a little confused by your question because you can take vertical measurements now um, using measurement mode three in the 3D tour, as long as you've captured the right scans and orientation to use measurement mode three properly. It's not dependent on vertical scans. The vertical scans are great if you have a CAD system and you wanna take the points and do additional measurements off of the LIDAR but for just general use of vertical measurements, you can do that in the 3D tour now. Andrew's just kind of doing an example of that. So you don't have to do this 3D package to do what you asked, unless I don't understand your question. Okay, so this kind of ends the formal part of this. Um, now we can enter the free for all stage. Mm -hmm. So if uh, you want to fire your questions into the chat window or the uh, Q&A session, um, by all means, this is a big lift and we, we get it that all of a sudden you're going from on-site measuring in 20 or 30 minutes to 45 minutes to an hour. You're going from 100 shots to potentially 200 shots. It's a big lift. It's a big price jump. You're putting the camera in different orientations, you're creating new file, new layers and folders that you 
haven't had before. Um, and we get it. It's just a case of um, you've just got to, if you have any questions or uncertainty or want a different plan, you'll have to, you know, go look at the resources online, play back this video. We have now done hundreds of these um, since it launched a little while ago. Uh, we've done hundreds and I think we've been closing, closing in on 500 of them already. So we know the, um, we know the process works as long as it's organized. And you can imagine we're asking it for, to be organized this way um, uh, so that our drafting team doesn't spend eight hours trying to decipher where the vertical scans are. That's all. Um, so I'll start to go through the questions because Andrew's having a hack attack still. Um, <laughs> will you offer this class again? Um, we are doing, the simple answer to that question is we are doing more and more and more about vertical scanning, vertical drafting, vertical uh, alignment and separation that I think it's going to be the new topic and norm for us. If, if Mark, you need more information, you can obviously play this back, but we also do free onboarding classes, which is kind of like a free for all every Tuesday and Thursday that you can join in. If you need more help with that, Andrew will be uh, administering those sessions and we'll be able to help out. Um, so I hope that helps. Um, deliverables of a three of a three D eye guide. So uh, that is a fantastic question, Joe. Wow. Um, when you or when you order a three D package, you obviously we are modeling that as a three D in Revit you're going to get a Revit model out of that. You're also always going to get your 3D tour out of that. There's nothing we do that doesn't include the 3D tour. So you've got your 3D Revit model, which is your inside and outside geometry. You've got your 3D tour. Then you've got your DWG files for every floor plan and every elevation plan. So you're basically getting a drawing per floor, a drawing per elevation, plus the 3D CAD and the 3D tour. So that's kind of an, a very high level overview. You're being delivered a lot. <laughs> that's why the price is so high, because we're doing a lot of work, right? Um, you don't see all the work we do in the background, nor do you really care about how we're taking your stair geometry and we're doing floor to floor alignments with it. We're making it really accurate or as accurate as we can through your stairwell alignments, uh, elevator shafts, exterior walls, and what have you, so that we can create a watertight Revit model on the back end. So it's a really good Revit file uh, of inside and outside geometry. Have So I hope that helps, Joe. You know, you get your 3D, your 2D, your tour, um, plus a PDF package, plus your dimension plan. So there's a lot that goes in there now. Have you, so a question now from Monica. Have you covered vertical on the exterior and at the top and bottom of the stairs? Okay, wow. Yes, thank you for thank you for calling us out on something that we missed or we skipped over really quickly. Um, there are three verticals required. You obviously, you have to do the exterior that, that Andrew has just gone through. So at the front, side, back, and left of the house. Right, you've got your four quadrants. You have to do your your verticals there. You have to do your verticals in your stairwells. We also recommend you do verticals at least on at least one per floor. Uh, so in inside the house, one per floor, but additional ones where you have complex ceilings. If you have sloped ceilings, angular ceilings, if you have separated ceilings, basically the more you put in there the more accurate of a model it is, but specifically with angular, angled or uh, offset ceilings, complex ceilings and things like that. So yes, uh, stairwells, interior scans for verticals and then exterior scans for verticals. Um, and then if you've got six foot ceiling, a six foot two inch ceiling, an eight foot ceiling, an angled ceiling, you don't have to have them on different floors, just have a vertical scan in each of those rooms. Um, so I hope that helps. I'll move on with that. If you have anything else, Monica, please reiterate that below. And news, is there any way to find out the cost of deliverables for the project after stitch upload, but before drafting process starts? In short, no, in terms of an 
accurate price, no. The only thing you can do is guess. Uh, I think this is roughly 5,200 square feet and put that into the calculator. Um, there are some people that go to the extent of going all the way up into a radex. They quickly sketch through the point cloud that cost them five bucks. They now have a calculator and can then say, well, it's at, was actually 5,400 square feet based on my length and width calculations. And for that, they can um, do a better guesstimate. It just takes probably an extra half an hour of work before you get to that point. So in short, no, but with a pretty good, with a not bad workaround, you can get there. Yeah. And just to add to that, I've seen a couple of people, they'll get their eye guide drafted. And then once they have their total square footage, then they'll use the calculator here uh, to estimate the, the, uh, the cost like Rob was talking about. Yeah. Because if you're doing residential or like commercial, you can always get the eye guide drafted. So now mm -hmm. you have your floor plans drafted and then request the 3d package as an update. You don't have to hit the grand slam first. You can hit a single and then say, all right, I know what my square footage is. Yes, the customer wants it. And we just subtract the cost of the eye guide out of the 3D package. You're not, we're not double dipping on that or anything. Uh, hopefully that answers your question, Anuj. Uh, Mark, do I have to have CAD to read the vertical measurements? Um I do insurance claim. Will the vertical exterior be included in the ESX? Nope. Um, the vertical measurements are not used in ESX files. Those are those are a completely different drafting data set and drafting procedure. Um, so to get your own vertical measurements, ha, huh, great question. You would either have to get a, you'd need a CAD system to pull them off. Yes, that's in short. Yes, you would need a CAD system to do that or get us to draft the 3D package for you. So you'd either get a DX, a Radex DXF with the vertical measurements where you can use a CAD system to say what's the distance between here and here and here and here, or you, we could draft it for you, which would be incredibly expensive just for that application. So ESX, not relatable to pull measurements out vertically. Yeah, you need your own CAD. Um, Ed, I have buildings that have exterior grades that vary more than one story of the building. How do I set up the panels to get that data? So your exterior grades that vary more than one story. So you're going to, you're going to have to get your camera higher in the air. So you're going to have to get a eight foot, 10 foot. Um, what are those stands called? Um, an elevating stand, you're going to have to turn it outside and get it as high as you can. Even though it has a range of 130 feet, if you want the accurate exteriors, you're going to need to get it up onto the second, at least midway on the second floor to capture all the way up to the third floor. I think I've done up to four floors with a standard. God, what's the name of that, that elevating stand? Um, and it works not too bad. So it can be done, Ed. You just have to have a better stand. Um, Mark, will the verticals help vaulted or trade ceilings for the ESX? Um, I always say yes. The draft, if the verticals there are there, the drafters will always pull it up and uh measure if they can, so it won't hurt to put them in there. Um, I would also put an instruction to the drafter or in stitch to say, hey, check out the verticals on these floors for the canted ceilings, et cetera, et cetera. So Bruce had a question. It would be much more satisfying to me if I could see the results that I'm submitting to my architects rather than just hoping that I'm delivering what they need. So Bruce, with the 3D package, you are getting two deliverables, three with the tour. The second deliverable is a complete set of PDF drawings that you are getting delivered with that, with all the CAD data. So you can up those, you can open up those PDF files. Um, I don't know if you have a copy of that, Andrew, but you can open up those PDF and see everything you're sending to them prior to you sending it to them. And so you're not blind. 
So it would just be you opening up the PDFs and reviewing them before you passed along the the CAD data to your to your architect. I I hope that helps. Um, it should. That's why we put the PDFs in there because there are a lot of people that didn't want to forward on the CAD data for some reason or another. Um, Max, if I have alignment issues and click, I know what I'm doing. Will it still show up as needed stitch as needing stitches when I upload it? Max, I assume you mean uploading from the app. Um, it just means that the, the, by default, the drafter is going to realign it anyways. So I think you're okay. I, th I they will realign it as best as they can. Um, I wouldn't stress too much about that. You know, in Stitch, we often go and correct everything. But if if it's just off by a little bit, then they'll fix it on the drafting end before they do it. They realign every property anyways. They have better tools than we do, um, than you do and, and I do myself for realigning the property. So I think that's as long as you clicked, I know what I'm doing and you know it's on the same floor and it's in the same area they'll do the best they can to align it for you. It would be neater to have section a section for elevations instead plans also with a different icon and survey and stitch. Oh, um, Antonio, I 100% agree. Yeah. All I'll say is stay tuned because we keep yelling for that. <laughs> um, I, I totally know what you're saying. And I think... Again, this is brand, this kind of organization and scanning is very new to us. So as we get more comfortable in the deliverables and the output, um, more things are coming and in flight regarding the, the use case and we'll hopefully get that cleaned up. But I totally agree with what you're saying. Um, it would be really nice in my, in I, like when you're saying create new floor, just to say right there and then, is it a vertical or horizontal to help you stay organized and iconize it, make it easy, and then reuse all of that information on the back end when we're processing it? Mm -hmm. I know I didn't answer your question, but I feel your pain and I hope they do something about it. Uh, Bruce, I use the iGuy calculator to estimate what I charge and don't give them the final, but right. Yeah, Bruce, that's yep. a, a fair way to do it as long as your guess is good, right? Uh, Paul, in the cost calculator, when I try to figure out price for a bigger property that includes your package at stage to reach out a team member, um, I would say that you're, you're absolutely correct, Paul. I would say that's going to be changing in likely the next quarter of us opening that up, um, because we're mm -hmm. investigating and doing some other things. So stay tuned. Um, today it is what it is uh i don't don't know what to say other than that's changing um and i don't know when it would be released um that doesn't give me any interior elevations the you are correct um we call those interior sections and uh, we don't do interior elevations we do exterior elevations so if you want interior sections it's a question of do you have um revit on your own or would you like interior sections as a deliverable we can discuss that as a private function it, it's possible it hasn't been opened up to the masses because everyone would have different requirements and it would be impossible to manage so um i understand what you're asking for bruce we just maybe need to get a better handle on how, when, what sections, et cetera. And we have all that information. So if you aren't delivering the Revit as a deliver, if you are delivering the Revit as a deliverable, the people who have Revit can section it and create an interior elevation from that. But you're absolutely right. We're not delivering that as a finished product right now. Adam, yes, there's a very easy option for 3D SketchUp in that all you have to do is request a 3D DWG file from us and it will automatically open in 3D SketchUp. So even though we've made it in Revit, you can ask for it as a 3D DWG file. And from there, you can go into SketchUp. Um, we have probably eight, nine, 10 customers that do that now. It works quite well. And they have 
validated the process and the workflow, and it works very well. Um, some of them have even changed their own workflow a bit better so that they can manage it the way they want on the backside in SketchUp. It's just maybe reach out to us and tell us how you would want to be using it and managing it. And then I can fine tune what you should be ordering from draft to do that, but you can do that today. So if you order a, a, a Revit file or a 3d package, you can say, please deliver it to me as a 3d DWG. And we will do that. I know it's not a menu box or a check box on the order form right now, but the save function for us is 10 seconds worth of work. And we'll do it if that's what you need. I think I cranked through those. Certainly did. All right, we have one minute left, but I'll stay a couple of minutes on overtime if there's any other questions. This has been a big data dump, and I know, thank you, Andrew, for, oh, drone question. Oh, 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 drone oh very good. Question. <laughs> um, yeah, we love drone data, and the drafters love drone data because it helps them on elevated questions or sorry, elevations, roofs, and things just to see what's up there when you can't get up there. Um, you have to know how to use Stitch. There's no way to do this in the app. You have to know how to use import user panos and then put them on the scene the way you want. You can't really take measurements from them because there's nothing that aligns the drone shot visually or LiDAR-wise to the rest of the scene. But... I know it's a blessing in disguise and we love them. The drafters love them because again, it gives you different perspectives on what's up there. So yeah, um, we get, you can see in this example here, this uh, renovator that does this adds drone shots um, in this particular house, they were ripping off the roof and making it a two story and they were only put about five or six drone shots in and um uh, it allowed them to just, they didn't do drawings from it. It was really for visual purposes. I hope that helps Stephen. If not, let me know. Um, all right, last one. I do deliver the RVT deliverable, but some of the architects in my area don't use a Revit, okay? The DWG files are what they are after. Okay, so Bruce, there are two questions associated with that. Do you want the 2D, 3D, sorry, do you want the 2D DWG or the 3D DWG? So now you know you can get both. You're going to get both, or you can get both if you order the 3D package. You can give them the 2D DWG files, or you can just say, hey, can you guys save out that Revit file as a 3D DWG? And we will do that. If you have a project you've done recently, Bruce, we can go back and save one for you as a DWG and I can email it to you and we can you can use that as a reference case. Okay, I'm tapping out, Andrew. The rest is up to you. You did a fantastic job. That was a rapid fire Q&A. Uh, and I think that actually ties us up for time, if I'm not mistaken. So I, I know I know, um, Mr. Fish asked for more questions about the reflected ceiling plans. The reflected ceiling plan is um, an option on all the packages. So all the way up from DWG, standalone DWG, standalone Revit, 2D CAD package, 3D CAD package, the reflected ceiling plan is an option. You do not, I repeat, do not, need vertical scans for a reflected ceiling plan. You just need two or three shots in the room that you're in. And we provide a reflected ceiling plan. So a basically a plan of where the lighting, the HVAC, whatever else is up there and the pattern uh, that's on there. And we provide that as a drawing and then a table or a legend drawing as well for all the symbols that we use. So. I will get Andrew to send that out when he sends the video out. Mm -hmm. Great question too. I'm, I'm going to be honest. It shocks me how many people order reflective ceiling plans. I had no idea they were that important. Maybe it shows my uh, ignorance in this space. <laughs> I am just dumbfounded by how often people order them, reorder them, and I don't know how they're used. Um, 
So it's been a very interesting learning curve for me. They are seemingly popular. I mean, um, I'm gonna. I do, I don't like to answer a, a question on a down note, but if it's the last question, um, MEP plans for the foreseeable future are not on the radar. They typically, we are adding more and more mechanical, electrical panel, some plumbing fixture objects to the plans, but not that you would consider a full MEP plan. So more and more things are being added at the premium level to augment the space and, and accurate, but um, not what you'd call a full MEP plan. Okay, last question. How do you contact if you have issues? Uh, if you go into the portal, click on the support tab. There are two ways. You can either call in or you can create a ticket. And if you have questions that are not necessarily uh, something that you feel is a product question, then you can email customer success at planetar.com. I'll put that in the chat. Oh, actually, I don't have permission. Rob, I will leave that to you to put that in the chat. Um, so you can email customer success at planetar.com. And uh, we can certainly guide you. If it if we end up redirecting you to our supports team, then that's perfectly fine too. But email us anytime, create a ticket anytime, or call anytime. Uh, if you can't get through to them, just leave a voicemail with your name and your email that you use to log into the portal, and they'll they'll reach out to you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, everyone. Yep. Talk to you soon. Bye now.